This right here is the EK Quantum Momentum water block, specifically designed for your CPU to cool your MOSFETs and your VRM solution. We're gonna unbox, disassemble, and talk about why you might want this for your next water cooling build. I am The Graying Tech, a gaming insider, and if you would like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. When it comes to improving your performance of your CPU, there's really three things that you are in charge and in control of. Temperature, voltage, and clock or frequency. With AMD's most recent solutions, you don't even have to worry about clock. So it's really coming down to thermal and being able to have reliable voltage being provided to your CPU components in order to get the maximum clock frequency that you can sustain. Now this solution right here is specifically for the ASUS ROG Crosshair Hero 8 motherboard. EK does have several mono blocks that are available for other motherboards that are out there. You will have to get the one that is specifically designed for your motherboard if you wanna go with a mono block. If one is not available, you can, of course, use a traditional CPU block. Now, inside the box here, you're going to find the equipment that you need to be able to install the monoblock itself, including EK Ectotherm, which is their thermal paste solution. We also have the thermal pads that you will use on both the MOSFETs and the VRM to ensure accurate contact with the monoblock itself. Lastly, inside you're going to find a back plate. You will have to replace the existing back plate on your motherboard with this one right here. This is specifically designed to work with the monoblock. And just like the GPU water block, this guy has some hefty weight to it. The block itself comes fully assembled, which is exactly what you would want if you're ready to take this and put it directly into your case and into your loop. You will want to run a cleaning solution through your loop once you get finished installing these components. So continuing along with the theme of performance, there are two reasons that you would want to use a monoblock over a traditional CPU block. Theoretically, a CPU block and case fans should provide enough airflow across the heat sinks on your system, but in my particular case, I'm a little bit worried about the continued use of plastic shrouds that could tr potentially trap heat in certain places on the motherboard itself. The problem with this is, as heat goes up, resistance goes up as well, and that means voltage goes down. So your VRM solutions as they get hotter potentially have to work harder and might not provide as perfectly reliable voltage to your CPU, which could result in errors going so far as blue screens of death or complete system restarts. Now, chances are you're never going to actually harm any of the components simply because of them getting hot. You're probably just gonna have to decrease some of your overclock, which on these kind of systems, that is the entire purpose of having an open loop cooling system. You want as much overclocked performance as possible. So for me personally, I want the assurances that this monoblock is going to touch all of the necessary components to get the heat out of the system and to ensure that there's not going to be any trapped heat because of the plastic pieces that exist on the motherboard. Aesthetic wise, you do have a Palm Acetel piece right here. And this is going to host the LEDs. This right here is an acrylic plastic top that then is sitting on top of a nickel plated copper base plate. On the other side, you also have similar material here for the MOSFETs and for the VRMs, pre-installed standoffs so that everything sits nice and level. Now, one of the things that I don't like about this are these stickers because that means I gotta break out the isopropyl alcohol again and scrub those off to make sure that I have a nice smooth surface. Even though it's not directly touching any of the components, it's an aesthetic thing, and I like my components to look as nice as possible. So that's going to bug me, even if I'm the only one that knows that it's there. One of the things I really like about EK is the simple fact that so much of their stuff is disassemblable. That's not a word. Can be disassembled. How about that? Okay, so the first thing that I took off here that you can see are the 
MOSSET and the VRM cooling solutions. This right here is the gasket cover. You can see how it's supposed to be. We'll have to fix that one and get it back inside of the chamber itself. But very heavy material, as you can see. And that's why these extra stickers are sitting on top of these because each of these individual areas have to be properly pressure tested in order to ensure that they aren't going to leak. I wanna ensure that the gasket itself will come off. And as you can see, there are some machine marks. This is kind of to be expected. And you do have those gaskets that are in place. Two things I wanna highlight with this chamber design, you can see there's going to be a lot of visual liquid inside of this block. That means if you add a colorant to your coolant, you're gonna be able to see that in your monoblock and it's gonna give a very nice visual representation. In fact, EK on their website has a great picture of this monoblock itself shown in red. Here you can see the monoblock itself with the cover plate, which is exactly where the fittings squeeze the water down through this little slot, which then forces pressure all through those micro fins that then fill the rest of the chamber and out the top. Taking a look here at the LEDs themselves, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, eight LEDs represented inside of here. This is a addressable RGB with the five volt connector, which is pretty much become the de facto standard that you would want to use for any of your components. Price for the monoblock itself is $155. It does require international shipping, which can add that up a little bit more around $20, $25 there. Stock itself is limited. EKs doesn't make a whole bunch of these. In fact, it seems like they make some in batches and then ship them out and then wait until they have enough to ship out again. I don't blame them, that's pretty good from a business model standpoint that keeps their inventory low and makes sure that people are still able to get a product for a motherboard that is out there. The next step for this monoblock will be paint. The most dreaded of all tasks when it comes to modding a PC, potentially outside of etching. You already saw with Project Red Star that I have painted several of the components. I'm gonna go over how to paint this monoblock, the GPU block, and several other case components to give you that just extra level of customization and personalization. And you can check that video out right there.